the chairperson, chairperson of the board of RTMC, Mr. Zola Majavu. We have the DG of transport, Mr. Pules Lepe, and the CEO of RTMC, Makosin Nimsibi. There are also other CEOs from other entities who are here and other senior managers. And let me say quickly that this media briefing that the minister will be giving, it's on the preliminary figures for the festive season. And this, this year, the festive season uh, went up to Jan from December 1 to January 11. So my friends from the media, when you, when you do your, please bear that in mind, that last year we gave you figures for December 1 to January 5. But this year is for up to January 11. So in doing, keep that in mind in, 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 in doing your stories and comparisons. And I'll now invite the minister to address us. Thank you very much, Mr. Zwani, our program director and the spokesperson for the RTMC. I want to take this opportunity to recognize the deputy minister for transport, Mayor Sindisiwe Lydia Chikunga, as well as uh, MEC Donald Grant, the MEC responsible for public works uh, and transport in the Western Cape, but also uh, recognize uh, the MEC for Houting, who will be joining us very soon, MEC Sizakel Nkosi Malobani, the RTMC chairman, Mr. Zola Majavu, members of the RTMC board who are present today, the director general, Mr. Pule Silepe, as well as the acting direct, uh, deputy director general, Mr. Fuchani, as well as the acting CEO, COO from the department, Mr. Rikoto. The RTMC CEO advocate, Makosinim Sibi, CEOs of other transport agencies here in particular, the CEO of the Road Accident Fund, uh, Dr. Eugene Watson, the heads of department, in particular the head of department from Houting, officials from the department and RTMC, members of all media houses who are here, distinguished guests and stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen. It is befitting and appropriate that on an occasion like this, which, which confronts us with similar circumstances, to retort, as the former president, Abombeki, once remarked, on his inauguration and said, and I quote, I'm my brother's keeper. I'm my sister's keeper. And because we are one another's keepers, we surely must be haunted by the humiliating suffering which continue to afflict millions of our people. Our nights cannot be but nights of nightmares, while millions of people live in conditions of degrading poverty. Sleep cannot come easily when children get permanently disabled, both physically and mentally. Nor can there be peace of mind when the citizens of our country feel that they have neither safety nor security because of the terrible deeds of criminals, close quotes. Surely, as a department and the Road Traffic Management Corporation tasked with the responsibility of road safety, we cannot sleep peacefully when thousands of our road users are mowed down on our roads by irresponsible road users. We cannot have peace of mind when innocent children are left in a state of agony, permanent emotional and psychological torture while awaiting the arrival of their parents who will never make it home alive. Allow me to sketch our long journey towards the attainment of the United Nations Decade of Action for Road Safety Targets. In the past five years, we have seen a steady growth in the vehicle population at an average of 3.3%, as well as the number of people who acquired driving licenses at an average of 4.7%, 4.7% per annum respectively. Thus opening opportunities and possibilities for participation in the economic mainstream. Our days and nights will forever not be peaceful as corruption continues to rear its ugly head, mostly in our driver learner testing centers, as well as vehicle testing centers, as, an accident, as well as an unacceptably high number of unroadworthy vehicles found on our roads causing more fatalities and crashes. This unacceptable state of affairs will soon come to pass. As the sun continues to rise to banish the darkness of unwarranted carnages and fatalities on our roads, we find solace and inspiration 
in the words of our president, His Excellency Mr. Jacob Zuma, during his inaugural speech when he said, and I quote, the road ahead is long and demanding. The challenges ahead may seem insurmountable, but we are determined to succeed, as we have always succeeded in our efforts to overcome challenges, close quotes. In the period between 2005 and 2009, the country experienced a small 0.52% cumulative annual drop in the number of road fatalities. This has accelerated to 1.88% annual decreases in period 2010 to 2014. Despite this reduction, we remain steadfastly concerned as one death is one too many. Allow me to also extend my gratitude to the traffic officers who tirelessly and unflinchingly worked throughout the festive period to ensure compliance with the rules of the road. We are equally indebted to all our stakeholders for their collective effort and responsibility. We unequivocally commend the role played by the police officers from SAPS, the South African National Defense Force, national, provincial, and local departments of transport, road safety activists and practitioners, emergency medical services and health practitioners, faith-based organizations, the freight industry, Santago and the taxi in associations or taxi industry broadly. Our NGOs, CBOs, youth formations, and all transport stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, the preliminary figures we are releasing today tell only part of the story about road safety in our country. A situational analysis conducted at the start of this year's festive season indicated that the number of registered vehicles had increased by a further 340,000 at the start of December last year, with 508,000 new driver licenses issued. A closer look at the road crashes and fatalities over the 2015-16 festive season depicted the following trends. The small vehicles accounted for 47.9% of total crashes during the season, followed by light delivery vehicles at 22.7%, minibuses or kumbis at 10.1%, and trucks contributed 4.8%. The majority of people who died were passengers at 38.3%, followed by pedestrians at 34.9%. Drivers contributed 23.9% of the fatalities, and cyclists 2.8%. The age group most affected for drivers, as well as passengers and pedestrians, are between the ages of 25 to 39 years accounting for about 47.9% for drivers, passengers 38.5%, and pedestrians 34.3% of the fatalities respectively. Children aged from zero to four contributed 10.4% of pedestrian deaths. And this is a misnomer to say children contributed because it is the drivers and parents who are responsible for this 10.4% of the deaths of our children. The gender mostly affected was males, with a contribution of 74.4% of total fatalities. Females at 25.2% of the fatalities. Very disturbingly, of this number, 81.4% is apportioned to blacks, whilst the remainder varies between colored, whites, Asians, and foreigners. The gender of 0.4% of the people was undetermined because they were burned beyond recognition. Weekends continue unabated to pose a major challenge, as ably demonstrated by the recent festive season reality. Most crashes occurred on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. The highest fatal crashes were recorded on Saturday at a percentage contribution of 22.2% of the total fatal crashes, followed by Friday and Sunday with 18.8% and 16.9% respectively. A new phenomenon has come to the fore this year with most crashes, crashes occurring between two o'clock in the afternoon and 23 hours at, which happened at 
This stark, stark contrast to the norm, if you compare it to the previous years, might be confidently attributed to our relentless and resilient implementation of the 24-7 law enforcement. Ladies and gentlemen, human factors contributed the most to the crashes with many collisions occurring as a result of jaywalking. People crossing the street, freeways, and roads wherever they want to. Speed that was too high for circumstances, overtaking in the face of oncoming traffic, hit and run, and driving under the influence of alcohol. The analysis further brought to the fore a very painful reality of the role played by unroadworthy vehicles. <coughs> Key to the vehicle factors that contributed to the crashes were tire bursts, faulty brakes, and smooth tires, while environmental factors included sharp bends, wet surfaces, and poor visibility. I would like to take this opportunity to extend our sincere condolences to the families and friends of those who lost who, or who lost loved ones during the festive season. I also wish speedy recovery to all those who are recuperating in hospitals and elsewhere in their different homes. Let me reiterate once more that we do not take the confidence and responsibility bestowed upon us lightly, and we need to do all in our power to instill a sense of belonging and hope for a brighter future for all our citizens. We are more inspired by the fact that our statistics are actual figures and not estimates as other countries do, and we account for each and every crash inclusive of municipal and rural roads. Our collaboration with Status A to validate and verify the accuracy of our figures gives us more comfort and confidence that we are in the right direction towards the attainment of our UN Decade of Action targets. Ladies and gentlemen, in the period between the 1st of December and January 11 of 2016, the 1,387 fatal crashes experienced on the roads represents an 11% increase in the number of crashes compared to the 2014 festive season where 1,253 crashes were recorded. The situation could have been more bleak had we not intensified our interventions and heightened our visibility. In the period under review, we have stopped and checked 1.7 million vehicles, arrested over 6,000 motorists for drunken driving, 808 were for excessive speeding and discounted 5,710 vehicles for being unroadworthy, and 419 for various traffic violations. Let me just repeat this. In the period under review, we have stopped and checked 1.7 million vehicle, vehicles, arrested over 6,000 motorists for drunken driving, 808 for excessive speeding and discontinued 5,710 vehicles for being unroadworthy and 419 for various traffic violations. Invariably, the fatalities increased by 220, which is 14% from the same period last year. That means it is 1,535 over, over the same period in the previous year to 1,755. Remember, Mr. Zwani gave an indication that we are covering the period from the 1st of December 2015 to the 11th of December, I mean January 2016. Whilst last year we covered 1st December to the 5th of January. Ladies and gentlemen, KwaZulu Natal is the only province that recorded a decline in the percentage of fatalities by 2%. The Western Cape recorded the highest percentage of 33% with the number of fatalities increasing from 122 to 162, followed by the Northwest, which increased by 26% from 100 to 108 
236 fatalities. The Eastern Cape increased by 22% from 227 to 278 fatalities. We have been disappointed by a few traffic officers who were caught on the wrong side of the law. The officers, two from the Northwest, one from Tswani Metro, and one from Gauteng, were caught soliciting bribes. We cannot afford to have people who behave in such an unethical manner within the traffic fraternity. I call on the National Traffic Anti-Corruption Unit to intensify their work to get rid of such rotten and unwanted elements from the traffic services. We are also determined to deliver a severe blow for those in possession of fraudulent driver's licenses and roadworthy certificates. I also wish to commend the majority of motorists who behave themselves during the festive period. An analysis of traffic volumes indicate that many motorists plan to undertake their trips during the day, unlike in previous years. Traffic volumes leaving Houting peaked in the mornings and decreased significantly in the afternoons. The same pattern was observed when motorists returned from their holidays. We have been particularly and seriously concerned by those who were caught speeding and the seeming is that these speedsters were granted bail. This sends a completely wrong message to the public and it demoralizes our traffic officers. And I want to indicate here, MECs and Deputy Minister, DG and CEOs, there are people who believe that being stopped for speeding, it's just a temporary hindrance because you will be given a ticket if you are below 160 at 159. And once you are above 160, you are going to be arrested. And we are considering serious measures to make sure that we deal with arresting anybody who goes above the speed limit. We urge the Road Traffic Management Corporation to intensify and fast track the engagement with the Pub Department of Public Service and administration to finalize and amend conditions of service in order to implement the 24-7 law enforcement without any limitations. The exercise we carried out during this festive period indicated that if we have 24-7 law enforcement operations, we see a reduction in terms of the wrong behavior on our roads. The reclassification of all road traffic offenses offenses to Schedule 5 of the Criminal Procedure Act will receive high priority in our endeavor and quest for a mandatory minimum sentence for drunken driving, for inconsiderate, reckless, and negligent driving. Enough is enough. We will spare no effort and leave no stone unturned in decisively eradicating lawlessness on our roads. Thank you very much. This is in the indica indications and attached to the statement is that number of fatalities per province, as indicated from 1st December 2015 to 11th January 2016, the percentage contribution of fatalities per province, as well as percentage contribution of fatalities per age for pedestrians. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Minister. Let's take questions. We'll take three questions at a time. Identify yourself, the organization you come from, and then pose your question. Let's start. Oh. I'm Minister Bogsville, I'm a full of one on one. The World Health Organization obviously during their campaign. Okay decade of uh, the road safety. Why out of the 280 countries on the list does South Africa have the most outdated data? They're using 2011 data. Why is that happening? Thank you. Um, Patrick O'Leary, Fleet Watch magazine. You mentioned that the statistics are from I think you said the 5th of December to the 14th of January. Uh, can you just repeat that? And, and, and they don't 
That's not the same period last year. Why aren't we looking at the same period and we comparing apples with apples? Because it could open debate to, yes, there's more, there's less, et cetera, it wasn't measured. We need the same days, we need apples with apples. Good day, everyone. My name is Johnny Sai. I'm with the African News Agency, Pretoria, here. I wanted to ask the minister, you will still bemoan the issue of corruption, but if we see the number of officers who are arrested or charged for corruption, don't you feel that that number is, is, is not, doesn't reflect what happens on the streets? Don't you think that these officers, they need to be policed better? Thank you. Let's take those minutes. I'll start with the last uh, statement with regard to corruption. I fully agree that the figure that uh, is given is not consistent to what we see. The operations of the National Anti-Corruption Unit is throughout the year. And this figure that we gave right now with, was only with, re, uh, with regard to those officers that were soliciting bribes on the roads in this particular period, those that were caught by this unit, not the total picture that we have. And that is why we also want to encourage and uh, appreciate those who have already done it, encourage our motorist uh, community, as well as South Africans, who know and have been subjected to this particular type of corrupt, uh, corrupt activity. We are not going to rest up until we have eradicated corruption within our driving license environment, the operational areas in particular, law enforcement, but also in the vehicle testing areas, because these are the areas that we believe can help us deal with the challenges that we have identified. The issue of the WHO question, I will give to the CEO to, to answer that one in particular, but also just to give you an indication that I remember last year around October, that we did clarify that particular matter, that we did submit information to WHO, but I think even in terms of the time when we went to the high level uh, uh, conference in Brazil, they did acknowledge that the information that they were using was the information that was on the, 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 the website. And we believe that we needed to update that. But also remember, we could not give the latest information as of last year to WHO before it is being taken through the consultation process, including the cabinet of the Republic of South Africa. It is only once cabinet had seen the information that we could submit it as a country report. It is not a Department of Transport a report, report, it is South African country report. So it was important that it be subjected to the cabinet consultation process and for, for a, 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 a cabinet concurrence. So that was done. The, the, the periods being compared uh, uh, from the 1st December to 5th of December last year and from the 1st to, to the 11th, I think with the media, we never win. Last year when we presented, you said, why don't we wait for the first weekend people go back to their workplaces? We've done it this time around, and you still find it fault, find us at fault. We waited for the return trips because the schools are op reopening this week, and that's why we would be handing over the, the torch of peace to the Department of Basic Education to continue with road safety as part of their life skills orientation program. So I'm just giving you that type of I indication. I remember last year you were standing in this corner asking the same question. <laughs> and, the, and, and this time around, you are asking the same question. I think it is important that you understand it, but I'll allow the CEO to respond to that one. Thank you very much. Thank you. The, the question of why we are using the 2011 uh, stats uh, that were utilized by the WHO before um, emanates from the fact that uh, 
the WHO has just released their report uh, for 2015, um, and we will be incorporating the new stats in our work as we go forward. So, so we are aware that there are a new set of statistics that uh, the WHO has released, and we'll be utilizing those uh, statistics as we go forward. I think that the minister has ably covered the point. You'll understand how we deal with the statistics in South Africa. The process matter that we deal with also includes the cabinet approving the statistics, which have been. And I think the DG, when he refers to the matter of the 2015, now that the matters have been consulted through the necessary processes, you'll have the figures. The figures are available. I think but the question is, why were they not published? Not as, as, to, as opposed to what that that they are not available. They are available, but we follow a different process in validating mm. the data that we're talking about. We are very skeptic to give the data that is unverified and uh, validated. So that's the process that delayed that matter. Uh, Minister, my name is Maraike from Mark from Jack Rand FM. Just to ask, um, before the festive season started, we had a briefing to explain how visibility and offices and everyone will be intensified, hoping to bring down this number. And yet here we sit again, another start of the year, and the numbers have gone up. What is it going to take for South Africans not to die on our roads? Um, what can you guys do and what can us as citizens and drivers do to stop people from dying in such large numbers? Thanks. Yusuf Omar here again from ENCA. Uh, the statistics and numbers are obviously critical to fighting the carnage on our roads, but causation is mm. infinitely more important if we're going to do any sort of policy. Why is there not very much here on causation? Uh, how do we know whether it's seat belts, whether it's alcohol, whether it's running stop signs, whether it's uh, cell phones? Aren't these details critical? One more. Minister, can we take those two questions? Thank you very much. Um, Jagaranda FM, <coughs> I think the MEC of Gauteng has just arrived, and the MEC of the the, 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 the Western Cape is here, the Deputy Minister is here, and the, the other role players. But I think it is also important, the information that we, we have, which shows the number of vehicles that were acquired in the last year. Just 300, more than 340,000. And the number of <clears throat> driving licenses that were issued, that in itself tells you that the vehicle population has increased, the driver population has increased. But also, if, 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 if anything, I'll take also some of these issues together. Yusuf, you're asking the causation. Yes, we've always spoken about drunken driving. We've always spoken about the need to wear cell phones, I mean seat belts, the need to, to restrain children we now have with the f effect from the 1st of May 2015, a, a, a regulation demanding that by law, when you buy a vehicle, when you have a child under three in the vehicle, you should be having that child within a car seat. You have seen the figures that shows that zero to four uh, uh, age groups, 10%, of the total fatalities is our children. So it means people are still not adhering to that. People buy vehicles, invest in all sorts of niceties in the vehicles, including music systems that makes them not even hear what is happening when they're driving on the roads. They do all sorts of things, but don't look at enhancing safety. And this is one of the things that we're going to do also engaging. We've already started engaging with stakeholders in this, but in the different sectors, including the model of menu, uh, manufacturers of motor vehicles. So it is one of those things that we need to look to. But also, if you look at the total number of passengers, it gives you an indication of people who are in the vehicle who have not buckled up. Every car has got seat belts for every person that is allowed in there, including minibuses and buses. But people still resist to buckle up. And that is one of the things that we're looking at because 
And I'm sure you would, you would, uh, those of you in the media who have been part of the operations with law enforcement have seen when a vehicle is stopped, passengers in a minibus not having buckled up. And I have said to the RTMC and the, 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 the department, we need to introduce a regulation that strongly demands that the driver and the passengers must be fined when they have not buckled up. Because it is important that people want to be policed. People want to be forced to do that which is right. Buckling up means that we would have had less passengers dying on the roads. Look at the, the, the figures for drivers. The number of crashes with drivers is at 23%, at which shows that drivers also, when they buckle up, they don't dare tell the, the, the passengers to, drive, uh, to buckle up. The issue of, 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 of using the cell phone and, and texting and driving. In fact, I was embarrassed to hear from the media, people in the media who believe that hands-free uh, uh, systems allows you to use your cell phone whilst driving. And I couldn't believe that I always thought that men and women of the media are our partners to deal with road carnages, to educate the public about what is right and what is wrong. But to be told that there is technology that allows you to use your cell phone whilst driving publicly. I was called by somebody from Bloemfontein who said, I don't believe that I'm listening to a radio station advocating for people to use. For you to call, you have to dial. For you to do anything, you have to, 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 to have a minute or so of distraction. Today we have vehicles that have got what is called power steerings and with just a small tilt, the car is already out of the That tells you that people must be even more cautious. So it is important that we deal with the causations. We are working together and I want to uh, acknowledge the role of the Department of uh, uh, Health and as a partner in this particular uh, 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 road safety initiative and through the EMS but also through their own interventions, making sure that we test blood and we can be able to get the, uh, the, the necessary conviction. But we also want to make sure that we work with the Department of Justice so that when people are fined 10,000, no magistrate in South Africa, no normal thinking magistrate will say this traffic officer is mad, this person can be given a condonation of two, uh, reducing the fine to 200 rand. That magistrate was not on the, the road. That magistrate is not trained for road safety, is not trained for traffic law enforcement. And I think it is important that we also get them to be held responsible for their actions. I made an example earlier on about some people who believe that speeding is a temporary hindrance if you are stopped for speeding. If it is 120, above 120 or 140, MSC can speak to speeding issues, it, it, it will just be a fine. And if it is a 60, you will be arrested. So people believe that, let me avoid the 60, but I can, uh, can, can put my, 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 my foot on the accelerator. There is also the belief that people, when they go to different destinations, as, just as when they are near to their end of, 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 of trip, they put the, they call it the last mile. And it is that last mile that is also problematic. But I once more want to ask you as men and women from the media, who also know of your colleagues who have perished on the road, as well as men and women from our sports fraternity in Tatema Javu, who unfortunately, and I want to say it here publicly, that unfortunately we as the tra traffic fraternity are expected to support our, our uh, uh, sporting a, 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 a bodies, but they don't want to cooperate and, and be partners with us on this particular initiative. We want to thank people like Ace Noble, who has gone out of his way, including use his article in some of the, uh, the article he writes in some of the newspapers to talk about road safety, to appeal to the soccer fraternity to be partners, but we were told just this festive period by the soccer fraternity that they are not going to give any one second message on road safety at any of the games they are playing because it will be what is it yeah we are we are capturing their audience it is those audience that after that match die on the roads it is those soccer players who die we've got many of them who died five in a vehicle coming from an after party and i just say 
I was embarrassed. I actually raised this matter with the Minister of Sports, who said he will raise it with them and we will engage him further on this particular uh, 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 matter. Because you cannot have any sector of society saying that we are not part of this. I want to thank our youth. They did marvelous work. In fact, I can attribute the reduction or the stability in terms of the clashes in KZN to their interventions, going to the beaches, talking to people whilst they are enjoying themselves there, to know when they leave that particular spot, going to soccer matches on the fringes of the stadium, not watching the match, but talking to, 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 to the public about road safety, being part of the operations to distribute pamphlets and talk to people about them being safe and alerting them at garages about buckling up. The young people of South Africa through the different uh, 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 organizations of young people in South Africa really outdid themselves because they saw the statistics and they believe they can help us to be able to appeal to the young people to say to die young can never be cool. People used to say die young and be a handsome corpse and it's, there's nothing handsome about being a corpse. Let me see, you wanted to say something? Yes, Minister. And good morning, and good morning, everyone. Let me just add that how sad we are for the fatalities on our road once again over the festive season. And to answer Radio Jacaranda, if you look at our statistics, vehicles screened for speed, 14,231. Vehicles exceeding speed, this is in December, 7993, 56.2% cannot have 56% of vehicles speeding. And in January, we split them between the two months, 13%. Speed remains the biggest problem. In fact, driver attitude yes. and behavior is the real issue. Um, the arrests for number for under the alcohol, we screened 20,819 in December, and only 235 were over the limit. So only 1.1%. So I think they're getting the message. But driver attitude, in December I drove, and I was behind the steering wheel. Normally I have a driver when I'm working, and I work in the back seat. But the number of moving violations I observed, and reckless and dangerous driving behavior, I must say I was absolutely shocked. And driver fatigue is another big issue. Mm -hmm. People have got to plan their trips properly. And I can just want to assure the media with a national minister that we're going to look at these statistics and do a proper debrief, a post-mortem on these and an analysis which will help us hopefully plan before the heavy periods coming up, which is Easter yes. and obviously over the forthcoming school holidays. And we want to work as a team. If I look at our fatalities in the Western Cape, they are unacceptably high. And if I look for the correlation, most of them are in the urban areas, including mm -hmm. the metro. There's about a 70% correlation to the figures in the urban areas. And there we have to rely on our partnerships with the local authorities to make sure that we network. And I'm also grateful for the support of the Naf National Traffic Police who were present at some of our roadblocks on the N2 in January. And I want to thank them for their support as well. Just a quick uh, addition. There were two issues that Radio Jacaranda raised. The one is human behavior, which my principals have already spoken to, but inextricably linked to that is legislation. I think many years ago, when rape and violent offenses were on the rise, one of the interventions that government did was to reclassify those offenses in terms of schedules. The relevance thereof is to determine how soon after you have allegedly, and I'm speaking as a lawyer, allegedly committed the offense, can you get out? With regard to traffic and your moving violations, there's an impression that those are nothing more than a temporary inconvenience. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you start your journey on the 15th of December and you're caught speeding, you will pay a fine or bail there and then or within the next 12 hours. But if the intervention that we are mooting, which is at an advanced stage of legislative amendments, comes to fruition,
it means your moving offenses are going to be treated just like rape and your violent offenses. What it therefore means is that if you are arrested, you will have to spend a minimum of seven days before you can make your first appearance for bail. That is going to be a very major you know, deterrent because everybody knows you are some DJ, you pay 10,000, you continue with your trip. And I think the fundamental intervention that is being made with the support of our principals and partners is to have that reclassification. And I wanted the media to get it right because it also talks to causation. Causation talks to the deterrence or lack thereof. So if you know, you may end up not making that trip to your next gig, chances are it is going to inform your behavior into a compliance mode. And I think little seems to be carried by our media partners of that legislative amendment, which is very critical. The same goes for your alcohol limit. We still make provision for drinking and driving in terms of our law as it currently stands, because you are talking at 0 0.05. And I know, depending on how well built you are, like my brother here, Dr. Eugene, you may go up to four pints, depending on your metabolism. But I think we need to get to a point where we say it's not cool to drink and drive regardless of the percentage of alcohol in the blood system. But those require legislative amendments, which we cannot do on our own. But ultimately, human behavior remains key and central. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, if you look at the pictures that we depict here on the screens, that gives you an indication of the impact. And I think MEC Nkosi Maluban can actually tell you about the being on a, a scene of a crash where 19 people had perished in a crash. 19 people in a minibus. So it tells you, and it also tells you about the emotional impact it has on our EMS, on our traffic officers, on the police, and all those uh, 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 role players. So I, I would want to say, before the, the deputy minister speaks uh, on the law enforcement achievements, we are not going to rest up until we deal with the perpetrators. You know, it is unfortunate that killing 19 people can be called culpable homicide. That is murder. Thank you, Minister. And, and, and I want to greet you all. <clears throat> Indeed, as you asked the question, uh, the Chakaranda representative, on the visibility and what, is it going to, what it is that it's going to take for us to reduce crashes, <coughs> there's a lot that we did during this uh, festive season. And I just want to inform the people that are here that, for instance, we're able to stop 1.7 million vehicles on our roads nationwide and of course we issued 593,648 uh, notices. We suspended 5,710 vehicles and of course we were able to screen drivers for alcohol uh, that is 347, 743,000 of them and we impounded 3,353 vehicles. We arrested 6,019 people for drunken driving. This is a problem. And I really want to emphasize this point. You know, in the past years, we used to say, when screening people for alcohol, women will account for only 2%. Mm -hmm. It increased mm. to 38%. And I think now we're around 42%. Mm. And this is a problem, particularly for, because maybe I'm a woman, the minister is a woman, a woman too. We were not experiencing this problem. It is becoming a serious challenge when even our own women are drinking and driving. We are mothers, and I think it's important to say this. We give birth to children. We are responsible for our families. And if we drink and take our children into our cars and we do not care about that, it becomes a problem. I just want to mention this. So of these drunken drive drivers that we arrested, many are women as well. It is mm. not to happen. It's a feature that is beginning to, 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 to be very common in South mm. Africa. Excessive speeding, we arrested 808. 
For other, I mean, other arrests, they accounted for 119. People that were driving without driver's license, driving licenses were 68. Uh, those that had uh, vehicles overloaded were 310. Passengers that were overloaded, we all arrested them at 245. And drivers with false documentations were 195. Those that were operating without permits or without operating permits, driving without operating permits were 1,282. And this is the work that we did during this festive season. Mm. And it actually says, had we not been there, we mm. would have had more figures. And the issue of attitude in South Africa is indeed a problem. You stop somebody, you can actually see, they can't even say, I am sorry. They don't see anything wrong mm. in them driving at 207 kilometers per hour. They will actually tell you that I'm rushing because I'm late. That's what a young mm. person said to us yesterday. Mm. That I'm rushing and I'm late, I'm, 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 I'm rushing to a place and it's closing at 6 o'clock. And you say you should be early mm. and drive at 120 kilometers on a national road. And anything less than that if it is another road. You've got their speed limits there. They will be driving cars, one thing which I also saw as I was on the road, cars without number plates. Yeah. Without number plates and without any identification. So they are there, they can't be picked up by any whatever, and they're just driving at whatever speed. And these are the issues that we have to deal with. And I think the minister has actually said that we'll actually be engaging the Department of Justice on some of these things because we really need their cooperation. Mm. The rollout of ARTO will also depend on what the justice system is doing and of course our subs and of course ourselves thank you very much thank you dear the, the the one of the operators not of the operators of the MSCs, the MSC of the free state was so embarrassed to be at the roadside uh, and said a uh, deputy minister the woman is so visibly drunk but the only thing is please please don't arrest me what will my husband say concerned more about the husband than the children who are in the car with her because she's a danger to these children but she doesn't realize it she just wants to please the husband the husband must not know that she was arrested for 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 drunk a, a drunken driving and i think it is important that we get the support from society we as a department and a transport fraternity are making our own inputs into the liquor policy that is being uh, drafted by the department of uh, trade and industry because it is important that we tighten the access to liquor in south africa we drink it's so embarrassing to be told that bottle stores in the townships in our suburbs have run out of liquor It can't be. The culture of drinking needs to be curtailed, needs to be stopped. We can't behave as if we're the first people to discover this particular substance. And I think it is important that we also, and uh, MECs, the Ministry of, of Health is going to help us with regard to this one, on the testing for other drugs-related uh, 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 substances because we also found that in testing for drunken driving we test for alcohol we don't have the tool yet to test for other drugs and that is one of the challenges that we have and we we we, we are working with the department of health with regard to that we are also finalizing the review of the road safety strategy we will be taking it through cabinet and after that making it a, a, a applicable to all our sectors. But we also, prior to taking it to cabinet, and I want uh, the young people have been very active in our road safety, they must have their own share of inputs. If you look at the total figure of number of young people who perished, it tells you we cannot keep quiet whilst our young people are enjoying their life as if it is the end. We can't have the number of deaths as if we have gone through a war. This figure just gives an indication that there's been a war in this country and there was no war. It is people who get into a means of transport to get to next point, only not to get to that next point. Okay. Let's have the last round, starting from here and then we'll go that way. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Minister. I'm glad you remember me from Rocha. I remember you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Mrs. Minister, at that same one, I asked the question the, the way ahead. 
um, I suggested the formation of a road safety ministry, and you said, no, you, there is a road safety advisory council being formed. That was formed, and it was put in place. I was at the announcement of that. Um, what has come out of that? Is that a positive uh, move forward? Um, and my second question is, um, at uh, that time, soon after you gazetted that uh, certain amendments to regulations, like Bucky's, I noticed a lot of Bucky's uh, involved in crashes this, over this particular, many, 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 more injured than dead, but, but, but many of them. And they totally disobeyed whatever was in that gazette. You also pointed quite a lot to trucks. I see this year 4.8% uh, of crashes are, are the trucks compared to 47.9% as, as you just outlined. Are you going to take trucks off the hook now? Um, because you did uh, actually mention that you were going to restrict trucks for six hours a day operating. Nothing has come out of that. I did check and nothing has come out. These are implementable actions that I'm looking for uh, that came out of last time. What has been implemented and what is the way forward in terms of implementing actions like that? And then the last question relating to this gentleman's question, causal. The, I believe a, a full investigation is only done if there are five deaths in a crash. Um, then it gets an accident investigator. And I think Perhaps if I make this more suggestion than a, a question, um, perhaps that could be looked at where every accident is given a little bit more uh, input in terms of the cause instead of just the five death ones because there is, I know there is a cost to that and, and et cetera, et cetera. That's a suggestion, my last one, rather than a question. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, Barry Bateman, Eyewitness News. I've got two questions. The first relates to the issue of moving violations. Now, MEC, you've said as well, you've noticed it, uh, it, it's a significant problem. Minister, you noted as well, dangerous overtaking is a problem. Um, and these are major contributing factors to the number of road deaths that we have. Now, one of the criticisms of our authorities is that there's too much focus on speeding. You have a policeman who sits behind a camera and just traps all day. And of course, then we have roadblocks. It's quite easy to set up a roadblock and trap. While conceding that we have a serious problem with moving violations, I don't see any stats in these figures you released today of any successes related to moving violations. Where are the people we've arrested for these moving violations and why aren't they reflected in these statistics if they are such a problem as you claim? The other relates to the comments made by Mr. Majavu in the issue related to the bail. It's too easy for people to get bail. You, as an attorney, know quite well that bail is simply a mechanism to ensure an accused presents himself to court. Why is the RTMC advocating using bail as a mechanism uh, to punish drivers, as opposed to simply ensuring that they appear in court? How is that lawful and constitutional? Thank you. Maybe we must take these questions. I'm calling two people here. The one uh, is the representative of Salga, to speak to the too much focus on speeding and uh, the, the hiding behind bushes and bridges. Salga will answer that one. The issue related to the regulations that uh, we, we are working on, the, Mr. Fuchani from the Rose Branch will respond to that one. And uh, the CEO will also speak to the issues, or Ndate Majavu will speak to the, no, Majavu will speak to the bail as mechanism. The, the Road Safety Advisory Council, the CEO of, of uh, RTMC will speak to that. But I just want to, to, to speak to the full investigation. In the statement, I gave an indication that as opposed to the way in which other countries do their uh, 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 dealing with uh, uh, road safety, and dealing with fatalities and crashes, we focus on a holistic picture. We look at everything, pedestrians, rural, suburban, plus the national and provincial roads. So for us, the determination for investigating the four or five uh, uh, deaths has not uh, uh, been applicable in South Africa. Any death on our road, we we investigate it. And remember, we're working with the police also. And, and, and the most important thing is also for you to realize that the work that is being done by the Road Accident Fund as the agency responsible for the fifth pillar of the UN Decade of Actions uh, 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 objectives, the post-crash care, 
is also focusing on the information from that particular aspect. So for us, every death is, that's why we say one death is one death too many. We cannot say it has to be high profile as per definition, as well as for a, a people or above. Yes, in terms of the capacity, you would find that there are cases that are lagging behind and, and all those type of things. But for us, it is important that we investigate each and every death. That's why we can even pick up one or two in the rural, in the rural areas. The issue of the moving violations also. Yeah, Salga. Let me allow you to respond. Well, Local um, government. Um, thank you, Minister. Um, good morning, colleagues. I, I, I think one of the, the key issues I think we need to appreciate with regards to law enforcement is that you do uh, uh, speed traps. I think it's one element to it, but I think it's not the only one. Uh, the, the issue of hiding behind bushes is um, as one might say, it is probably looking at only speed, but it's also got other um, elements linked to it. When a traffic uh, cop um, stops you for, for speeding, um, whether you hide behind bushes or not, they also would want to find out whether you drunk uh, or, or you've been drinking or not. So it's not only focused on the issue of, of, of speed alone. But having said that, um, so, uh, so speed, uh, speed trap is, is, is one element of, of law enforcement. But I think secondly, the issue of roadblocks is also very important. Mm -hmm. So within the roadblock uh, element, you, you look at issues of roadworthiness, and uh, you want to ascertain whether the road, um, the car is actually um, roadworthy and yeah. will be able to, to travel on the road. And I think that's when uh, the deputy minister was speaking about uh, where you find cars uh, driving with uh, tires uh, that are, are, are worn out. So that's where you'll be able to detect it. And I think lastly, the issue of where to find out if someone has been drinking or driving, you actually get it um, at, at, at a roadblock uh, scenario. So I think as local government, um, we, we, we have lots of our traffic officers working on the ground. So we do uh, participate with regards to uh, the festive season, um, law enforcement strategies, and also the transit and um, the 300 um, um, and, 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 and 56 uh, day with regards to uh, law enforcement um, with issues of, 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 of roadblocks. We also do um, speak, uh, sp uh, speed traps and all other related uh, issues. We also do go to schools uh, to, to also speak to issues of road safety uh, to, uh, in, in, in primary and high school uh, situations. Thanks. Thank you very much. But also one of the challenges we have that we will be engaging the minister and we have already started as part of the engagements with regard to the amendment to the NLTA is the issue related to municipalities encouraging traffic officers to end their keep where they are actually supposed to make sure that the revenue of the municipality is increased by the number of a uh, law enforcement, not necessarily law enforcement, but speed traps that they do. And it's one of the things that we have ide identified with the RTMC that in the new year, we will, oh, it's already new year. In, in this year, we will be engaging with provinces in particular and uh, the municipalities with regard to this particular aspect. Because it is not correct for us to encourage traffic law enforcement officers at local government level to really raise the revenue of municipalities through speeding, to, through trapping for, for, for speed. But also the, 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 the issue of the in full investigation, I just uh, need to indicate that we investigate not only the deaths, but also the injuries. Because you'd remember that for you to be able to even put a claim, is it wherever? Is it your insurance or is it your, for the road uh, accident fund? You need to have the, the, the what is it called, Ghana? A case number. So it is important that you realize that we actually investigate every crash. The, the, the LTVs and trucks, uh, Fuchani, where are we with regard to the the regulations they're out minister for comment they're still out for comment yes. okay 
And I'm appealing to many of our citizens to make inputs with regard to these particular issues because it is important that you realize that this would be what we need to make sure that we reduce the number of people who are transported in buckets and also in, 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 in trucks and in the behavior of the, the truck drivers. But I also want to indicate that our engagements with the freight industry, they've also given us an indication of what they are doing. And I want to indicate there are companies in the transport sector that have also subjected themselves to the RTMS, which is a self-regulatory, a, a, a self-regulating system, the 39,001, as well as the 1,390, the SANS 13, uh, 1395 of South Africa. So it is important that you realize that they are also coming to, to the fold and to, to the party. Before we finalize the strategy, they would have also made the, uh, the particular input. CEO, your, your, your road trip traffic, your road safety advisory council, before we go into Ndatema Javu. <coughs> Minister, uh, DM and MEC, is definitely the, uh, the inauguration of the road uh, safety advisory council has borne some fruits. You will recall that within the council you have a number of expertise varying from the institutions of higher learning as well as people within the private sector. They are input it is also going to be m more glaring and obvious within the development of the road safety strategy. The issues that they've come with and the interventions that they've su suggested are beginning to bear some fruits with the broader consultation of various uh, stakeholders. We have also engaged with the University of Stellenbosch, which is offering a course on road tra for road traffic officers to reorientate them and train them to focus on safety as opposed to picking up speeding fines and, 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 and other fines. And Dr. Majavu? Very quickly, uh, Mr. Bateman, the, let me deal with the first easy issue with regard to little is being said about the successes on the arrests. Uh, I, I think you would be the first one to acknowledge that once traffic law enforcement officers have done their job in terms of identifying errant road users and arresting them and issuing notices, a subsequent process of the Department of Justice kicks in. We live in a constitutional democracy that even a speedster who's caught doing 209 is still presumed innocent until the courts have pronounced on their guilt or otherwise. That very process may outlive the reporting periods. We're reporting between December 1 and January 12th. Chances are those speed stars are still going to be processed during the normal course of the court proceedings. And it may well be that by the time they are finalized, this reporting period would have come and gone. So it is not something that is necessarily within the control of the Department of Transport. However, I do make take the point that through a closer collaboration, which the minister referred to with the Minister of Justice, we need to find a way of reporting back and profiling, especially these repeat, repeat traffic offenders. There was an attempt at that, by the way, and some members of the fourth estate uh, you know, criticize us severely that we're infringing upon the constitutional rights of people. You'd remember in the Western Cape, there was an attempt to profile uh, such uh, you know, culprits. But be that as it may, it is something that has been taken under advisement. The, the most important issue that you, 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 you sought to, to raise was with regard to the reclassification of the scheduling. And you are saying we are focusing on bail. With respect, that misses the point. The point that we are trying to get across is to raise the profile of traffic offenses from being considered as, ah, it's nothing. As a matter of fact, in some of your job applications and in other important application forms, where it asks you, previous convictions, there's a qualification between the brackets that says excluding traffic offenses. Yeah. I don't know if people have seen yes. that. That gives an impression that it's okay to break the rules of the road. Mm. And that's exactly the point that we are trying to deal with, to say traffic violations are in and of themselves a serious contravention of the law that needs to be treated with the same might. So we're not naive by just focusing on bail. The point we said was we are trying to deal with a deterrent. Because the truth is, you know, there was a so-called DJ who was rushing to a gig and had to go overseas the next day. Now, because of the ease with which bails are being dished out, they paid bail 
and they were onto the plane. And what we are trying to achieve with this legislative amendment is to say, no, 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 no. You're going to treat traffic offenses in the same way as you treat rape and other serious offenses because of the consequences attendant there too. So we are not missing the point. As to what becomes of those people who've been arrested, it's not something that is within our control. It is as a result of a different justice system. And I hope the point is now being clarified. We are simply trying to heighten the awareness around the importance that needs to be attached to traffic offenses and moving violations. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> Take one last call and, and then we close it. Good day, everyone. I'm Major Ngoane from the SAPS, from Forensic Science Laboratory. Uh, it actually, it's a request to the RGMC to involve us in their planning when they are doing this thing, because at the end of the day, most of the time, the focus is only during December and January. But on other month, if it's not a high profile, it's a minor case that happened in Jamestown when there are three people. The way to find out is only us. I will also recommend the contribution of Deputy Minister Shikunga to helping us to appoint more engineers while we were still in the SAPS. Now we do have a lot of engineers in SAPS, SAPS that at the moment are not used. In We find that when we try to engage with the SAPS, Couple of homicide becomes a minor thing to SAPS because they focus on rape and other things. Whereas if thing, maybe RTMC can involve us, more of our engineers in proactive policing, because for example, if you have a bus that is traveling from Amtata going to Cape Town, and it was never detected in Queenstown, in Dakastad, in Kredok, in Khafrenet, and then it's involved in an accident in Lohamka, for me, it also states that you know, the system is not good in detecting those things. You know, I will be glad if we can be involved more. We do have an office in Cape Town where we have engineers that were recently appointed in Plata Clove. I will be glad if the MEC from Western Cape can involve those things because I believe you know, we have capable in young guys that are engineers that can contribute a lot. And also our office in Pretoria can also assist the Gauteng and also other provinces around. Thank you. Why don't they attend the road safety summit? No, they invited. They invited. I'm delighted Sapsi here and I want to thank you for your support during the season. I want to show you this file. This file is every single serious case in December and January. Mm. Everyone's got a case number, mm. and I can assure you, through our traffic centers as well, we will involve you in our future planning. It's a very good point you've made. And if one looks at the causality of these smashes, I think the basic issue is there's not sufficient deterrent to the drivers. The other thing we need is a huge education program, especially in the Western Cape, for pedestrians. Mm. Because if I look at the stats for the whole of 2015, 44.6% of our casual, our fatalities were pedestrians, which pumps up those numbers mm. dramatically. So the devil is in the detail in the numbers. We need to analyze those numbers and then take appropriate action. But SAPS is definitely part of our team, and thank you for your support. But I also want to indicate that all operational work that has been done is actually done with SAPS. The figures we're actually presenting today have emanated from the processes with SAPS. I think the CEO is better placed to respond to, to your issue. Maybe RTMC at this level is not dealing with each and every unit of SAPS, but SAPS at a national level. Maybe CEO? Yes, yes, Minister. We subs in its format, particularly the the unit uh, led by Major Piekes is the one that is in General Masala are the ones that are representing the the, insti the, the institution. However, we take advice. We'll be collaborating with you so that we also extend to the general 
the fact that we need this part of the representation minister. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. We'll take the request for one-on-ones. So can, can we take one, that opportunity now for one-on-ones and we close the press conference as it was? I thought there was a hand. You, you, okay. You waited for the last one. Uh, good morning. My name is Neo Makiting from SABC Radio News. Uh, Minister, my question is very simple. It comes from the road fatalities. I've heard you talking about the enforcement, the education, but uh, my question to you is road fatalities are happening on the road in terms of engineering in terms of constructions of our road, are they not party to be blamed in terms of, if you look at the, the fatalities in, in the Eastern Cape, in the Limpopo, the roads they are ter terrific. Can't we sort of like say our roads needs to be updated or upgraded? <clears throat> I, I think uh, you say you are from the roads fatality unit, but if you know, our road safety strategy and objectives have got three is education, enforcement, and engineering. Engineering speaks to the conditions of the roads, and I'm, I'm sure you, in, if you read the statement, you'd also uh, pick up the areas where we refer to environmental factors, which also speaks to the sharp bends and all those type of things. These are the areas that we are also looking at. And I'm sure you would have realized that the way in which roads are being built, a typical example right now is the work that we are doing with R573, the notorious Moloto Road, to make sure that we can enhance its ability to be safety enhanced as opposed to the way it is constructed that creates it uh, or lends itself to creating the number of crashes that happened in that particular area. So engineering is central to road safety. And that is why you'd find that one of the agencies that is actually part of our five pillars, five, uh, five pillars dealing with safer roads is central that uh, leads to, 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 to dealing with the engineering aspect. Our provinces through a grant that we have nationally called Samba Sonke, is also addressing the E with regard to engineering. Municipalities, through the Municipal Infrastructure Grant, they are also addressing that. But you know that we don't have the requisite amount of money to deal with everything at the same time. That is why we always refer to the more than 750,000 kilometers of road network with the different percentage that we have, almost more than 30% of the roads being in a very good condition and more than 60 percent of our roads being in different conditions from very poor to the 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 the, the fair a, a type of roads that you would have we have situations in our communities where our communities have actually complained about the roads there's one community that member that called me on sunday and said that if if the municipality and the province can come and remove the little tar that they still have on their road which means the road is actually not tarred anymore because you are saying the little tar. There are some anecdotes that we pick up from our people when we are on radios and all those that when they say, when we are expected to drive on the left side of the road, we are driving on what is left of the road. That speaks to the engineering issues, the conditions and the state in which our roads are and we are addressing it. And that is why we always speak to the dealing, you remember in uh, July 2014, we launched what we called Operation Zeland to deal with potholes and be able to make sure that we can reduce the, 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 the potholes. And I want to applaud some of the municipalities in the work that they've done, creating cycleways and also creating uh, it's cycleways and, and walkways for pedestrians as well as for cyclists. But one thing we have picked up is the selfish nature of motorists. They drive on workways, they drive on cycleways, and that is also the enhancement through engineering that we talk to, to make sure that our pedestrians and our cyclists can have their equal uh, size of space on the road. Thank you very much. Did you? 
Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Program Director. I think before we, we go to the one-on-one -on -one interviews and the, the minister closes, um, perhaps just to repeat what, what is uh, almost known by all of us, that uh, approximately 80% of the uh, ex accidents or, or crashes on our roads are due to human factors. 13% attributable to road factors, as the question was asking, and then about 8% to vehicle factors. The human factors, uh, as, as we have uh, mentioned earlier, include uh, jaywalking by pedestrians, uh, overtaking, uh, where it's not safe to do so, speeding, alcohol, fatigue, and so on and so forth. And we have also noted that the, uh, most of the fatalities on our roads uh, involve the age group uh, 18 to 35 years. I think what is important is that uh, law enforcement alone uh, is not enough to, to, to reduce the, the rate of fatalities on our road. It is not possible for us to put a law enforcement officer in every vehicle or to police each and every pedestrian that is walking. Uh, we need compliance, uh, but, but I think until we have a, a change of mindset that says that road safety is everyone's business, we are, we are not likely to, to overcome this, this carnage. Uh, and, 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 and we believe that we need the same national vigor, um, same to the one that we mobilized uh, in the fight against HIV AIDS in order to overcome the road carnage on our roads. And, and the media should be our partners in that fight. Thank you. Thank you. Minister, can I invite you to... Before we conclude, I just want to, because I said before we finalize this uh, strategy, we would be having had engagements. Tiana will just speak to the stakeholder engagement uh, process that we have initiated and that we are still going on. on. Uh, thank you, Minister. Good morning, Deputy Minister and uh, Mrs. President. <coughs> Good morning, colleagues. The CEO of the RTMC has already made reference to the inauguration of the Road Safety Advisory Council, which basically seeks to bridge the, the gap that existed between ourselves as government and policymakers and the RTMC, of course, being the implementing agency, um, and the private sector and civil society in general. In the room here, you will notice that there are a number of stakeholders uh, from non-profit organizations to private sector participants and other institutions of government. But we have realized uh, the need to uh, work together closely because indeed, as the DG indicated, road safety is everyone's responsibility. It cannot just be a responsibility of, of government or state institutions. So the minister has started a program as of last year to meet with various uh, stakeholders in the private sector, particularly those who have resources to contribute towards uh, uh, road safety uh, campaigns, towards other road safety programs that will basically see government um, delivering on its mandate much quicker and efficiently than it would if it were to uh, go it alone. We've already met with stakeholders such as the South African breweries, uh, we're meeting with uh, Brand House, uh, and many other interested parties, and indeed most of them uh, have pledged their commitment to work with us, but uh, not only that, but to contribute in uh, the form of resources to ensure that some of the campaigns that government runs uh, through media or through um, uh, community engagements are sustained over a long period of time, because one of the challenges that we face as government is the issue of limited resources when it comes to communicating uh, road safety managers. There is a competition so far as allocation of resources is concerned between what we need to do at an operational level and what we need to do at a marketing and communication level. So we believe that these kind of partnerships are going to be uh, quite helpful in terms of ensuring that we um, 
uh, bring our, our stakeholders uh, uh, closer to get to understand the constraints that we have and see how best uh, can they assist uh, by form of uh, uh, contributions to some of the work that we're doing. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. In conclusion, uh, Dr. I just want to indicate that uh, the AU has got a road safety plan, and in the road safety plan, they recommend that at least 10% of the road's infrastructure budget be dedicated to road safety. That is something that we'll have to work with a uh, national treasury on to see how we can be able to implement that. But we also believe that the contribution by the different sectors of society, including the private sector, will help us to create more pool of volunteers and activists People are out there are eager to participate, but you would know that we've always said that we need the necessary resources to be able to monitor and, and uh, uh, police moving violations. So we would need more resources, and that's why we in, uh, believe that increase of law enforcement officers, as well as creating the cadre of reservists within the law enforcement or traffic law enforcement fraternity will be important in this year we need to finally put to rest the issue of the 24-7 uh, requirement. And the engagement with the Department of Public Service and Administration is very central. Incidentally, the Minister of uh, Public Service and Administration is the one who launched the uh, road safety uh, uh, campaign for fest the festive period campaign. And I, I, I got feedback from him on the work that was done, MEC Malobane, on that particular day, right up to the end at around 9 o'clock. And he is also more convinced that road safety cannot be, or red, uh, road traffic uh, law enforcement cannot be just eight hours. It needs to be around the clock. So we need to have that uh, numbers uh, increasing. So we're looking forward to a very safe year. The schools will be reopening, will be handing over the torch of peace to the Department of Basic Education. We believe that through engagement of our learners, our children, we will get behavioral change. But we believe that it is the person that is behind the steering wheel. It is the person that is a passenger. It is the person that is a pedestrian that must adhere to the rules of the road. The rules are there. They just need to be obeyed, adhered to, and complied to. Thank you very much. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the press conference.